We previously discussed how stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, both from the bone marrow and from the fat, can be useful in treatment of autoimmune diseases. Diseases where the immune system is attacking a part of the body, for example, rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis. Now, mesenchymal stem cells, on the one hand, they have ability to regenerate tissue either directly or indirectly by producing different growth factors. But the main reason, or one of the main reasons we think mesenchymal stem cells work against autoimmune diseases is by modifying the pathological immune response against components of the body. How they do this appears to be associated with induction of T regulatory cells. T regulatory cells are a type of T cells which stop the body from attacking itself. They control or they regulate the immune system. Now, one of the questions that's asked is if the mesenchymal stem cells can induce these T regulatory cells that protect the body against attacking itself, why not take out T regulatory cells from the body, expand them outside of the body, and then put them back into patients? Unfortunately, it's not that easy because T regulatory cells don't like to be expanded. When you take them out of the body, if you activate them, they don't seem to grow very well. We're going to discuss a paper that found one way how to expand T regulatory cells. And basically, this paper examined the hormone leptin. Leptin is a hormone that prevents obesity. So, mice that don't have leptin, that are knocked out for leptin, they're very obese mice. They call them OBOB mice. Now, what this paper did is it examined this very strange relationship, very interesting relationship between a hormone associated with weight loss and T regulatory cells. So, the first thing the scientists did is they looked at T regulatory cells. And how you look for these guys is you look for cells that express the proteins CD4 which is found on a lot of T-cells, and CD25, and also FOXP3. So, if you look at CD4, CD25 cells, that are uh, regulatory cells, you can see in this figure they express more leptin receptor. That's the figure, uh, the, bar, the black bar, as opposed to the white bar, which is CD4 positive, CD25 negative, conventional T-cells. Next thing that the scientists did, is they try to uh, they took T regulatory cells and they cultured them. So as you can see here, the uh, the y axis is proliferation, multiplication, and when you just look at the T regulatory cells in the presence of media, they don't multiply. When you activate the T regulatory cells with anti CD3 and anti CD25, there still is no multiplication. When you activate the T regulatory cells and add leptin, that hormone we mentioned, again, there's no multiplication. However, if you block leptin, if you give antibody to leptin, you can see a very profound proliferation. And then if you give the antibody and then add leptin, you see a suppression of proliferation. So that gave the idea that blocking of leptin, giving antibody to leptin, increases proliferation of T regulatory cells when they are activated with anti-CD3 and anti-CD25. In order to reconfirm this point, increasing concentrations of anti-leptin antibody were added here in this figure to the CD4, CD25 T regulatory cells, and you can see increased proliferation. Whereas conversely, if you give leptin, you can see decreased proliferation. So, there seems to be a method here of expanding T regulatory cells. The next question is, these expanded cells, do they actually still suppress activated T cells? So, in this figure, you can see activated T cells, CD4 positive, CD25 negative, conventional T cells, when you give them anti-CD3, anti-CD28, they multiply. When you give anti-CD3 and anti-CD28 to anti-leptin expanded, T regulatory cells, you can see a little bit of proliferation. When you expand the T regulatory cells, wait eight days, and then mix 
the expanded by anti-CD3 and CD28 and anti-leptin. You mix those cells with activated normal cells. You can see here suppression. So this is telling us that if you block leptin and activate with anti-CD3 and anti-CD28, you see an increased proliferation of T-regulatory cells. Now, where is the leptin coming from? Because here you're blocking leptin, you're giving anti-leptin, but you're not putting leptin in the media. So what the investigators found was that actually the both normal T cells, CD25 negative, CD4 positive, and also T regulatory cells make leptin the longer you keep them in the tissue culture. So, and you can see in the figure here that, that there's an increased leptin uh, production with time, and that the CD25, the T regulatory cells, make more leptin, but also that normal T cells also make leptin. Now, how could the blockade of leptin signaling, blockade of autocrine leptin, how could that be um, stimulating proliferation? One method is by inducing interleukin-2. Interleukin-2 is used by T cells, is used by T cells to prolifer uh, proliferate in general, all T cells, as well as T regulatory cells. So here you see that when you block leptin, there's an increase in interleukin-2. Now, one of the reasons why T regulatory cells don't like to be expanded is because they have high levels of this um, protein called P27. P27 is basically a cell cycle blocker that blocks cells from cycling. So if you compare in non-activated CD4 positive, CD25 negative normal T cells, these ones have low concentration of uh, P27 because they can multiply. In contrast, as you can see, the T regulatory cells, the CD25 positive T regulatory cells, they have higher concentrations of the P27. When you activate normal T cells and T regulatory cells with anti CD3, anti CD25, you see that the activated uh, normal T cells, they express little P27. In contrast, the activated T regulatory cells, they express a lot more P27. This is probably one of the reasons why they don't like to multiply. Now, when you add anti-leptin antibody, you can see there's a much higher increase in the P, much higher decrease, sorry, in the P27. So basically the idea is that leptin is being made by the body and it shuts down T-regulatory cell um, multiplication and it's also made of course by the T regulatory cells themselves. When you block the leptin then you get an increased number of proliferating T regulatory cells because there's a decrease in the inhibitor which is the P27. Now this is really exciting but the question is does it work in vivo? So what the investigators did is they purified T regulatory cells labeled them and injected them into mice which on the left hand side is at four days mice which received control antibody and received T regulatory cells so you can see a little bit of proliferation at day four on the right hand side top quadrant when you give the anti leptin antibody in vivo there is an increased number of T regulatory cells that are proliferating this increased number is even higher at day 7, after the, the lower quadrant on the right hand side, after giving the anti-leptin antibody. So what the study is saying is that one possible method of expanding T regulatory cells is by blocking this hormone leptin. And basically this is an important finding because there's a lot of different things that control the physiology of T regulatory cells. If we can identify good ways, optimal ways of expanding T regulatory cells by knowing the biology, then one day we will be able to generate for each patient expanded numbers of T regulatory cells which then can be used to fix immune abnormalities. Thank you very much.